Hello guys, I hope y'all are doing well. Today I wanted to make a video about the last month, which has been of great learning and change when it comes to languages and tools that I'm using. And one of them is Vim, more specifically Neo Vim. And what I wish I knew before switching. The first thing is why I switched. My main reason for switching was the fact that VS Code was becoming quite slow since I had many plugins and programs that needed to be run in the terminal and VS Code itself, which made my experience quite sluggish. And I remember hearing about Vim and how quickly it was, but what attracted me the most aside from its performance was how people moved in Vim. It seemed as if they were these coding experts moving extremely quickly and changing text or code with great speed. That's when I learned about Vim motions. And Vim motions is what kept me wanting to switch to Vim and actually never look back. So I'll talk more about this in the next section. So let's get to the actual use to the actual things that matter, which is what I wish I knew before switching. There are three main things in which the first one is definitely the mindset. The key aspect when switching to Vim is the mindset. Since Vim or Neo Vim has an extremely steep learning curve, it will be a struggle in the first few days that you will definitely feel it. However, once you get the hang of it, you will never want to look back. The mindset you should adopt is one of learning, understanding and embracing the changes and shortcuts. Another crucial point to keep in mind is that when you want to do something in Vim, do your best to find a way to do it with the keyboard. Let's say remove an entire line, which will be DD, or let's say copy something, which will be Y, for example. So yeah, anytime you want to do something in Vim, avoid your mouse at all times. Try your best to just get away from it and look either on Google, on a spreadsheet, even ChatGPT, I think that gives some prompts about certain specific shortcuts or what you can add in order to do something with the keyboard. So yeah, that's the first thing. If you ever want to do something in Vim, think, think first, is there a way I can do it with the keyboard? The second thing, which is the BS code extension. Before delving deep to Vim, I wish I had prioritized learning more Vim motions first which this is an image of what Vim Motions is, but stop right there. It is just a mess of image, in my opinion. What will be more important, as you can see, is first start looking at the signs, which are the arrows, which is the up arrow, which has a K, for example, at the top, that is the way you can move upwards, an L in the right, an H in the left, and a J below. That is the way you will move with Vim. But in reality, you don't really need to learn those spreadsheets and like, I don't know, that text manipulation visual mode. But what I wanted to share with you with that image was all of the different things you can do with just the keyboard. Like you absolutely don't need your mouse. That is why the mindset point and trying to think or find a way to do something with the keyboard is so key when switching to Vim. So to get back to our point, there is an excellent plugin in VS Code called Vim, which provides some of the key key bindings and modes that Vim offers. And I think you can even change the config in order to do specific things with Vim shortcuts or Vim motions. But at that point, I would have just switched to Vim already. So if I were to learn Vim again, I would have definitely used that extension in VS Code for around two or three days before fully switching. So I wanted to quickly show you how to get started with the extension, which will do code. Here we're going to look for the extension, which we'll do with Vim, and we'll do install. We'll open a file, for example, we'll do the same code as we did before, which is code 
uh, this um, config file. So we'll close terminal. And as you can see here, we have now this like block type of typing and we have this status bar, which is uh, normal, which as you were able to see in the image, there is normal insert visual and I think I forgot the other one, but it is literally the same. I'm moving with J and K here up and down. And for example, if I wanted to put hello, I'll do A and do hello, then control C to go back to normal mode. And if I wanted to delete this line completely, I will do DD. And if I wanted to get that space back, I'll do O. So yeah, it is actually incredible how this extension works and how you are able to move within it. So it is definitely a must. The next thing is Beam Tutor, which is basically a tutorial built in Vim or NeoVim. They are different. The code for NeoVim is, I think, Tutor, and the code for or slash prompt for Beam Tutor is literally Beam Tutor if you're using the regular Vim. But if you're using NeoVim, it is most likely just Tutor. But for example, let's enter NeoVim. Let's do Tutor. As you can see, it doesn't work. Or Tutor, not lowercase, it doesn't work. And Beam Tutor. And it doesn't work. So if this happens to you, it is most likely to the config file you have downloaded. And it usually has to do with Lazy Vim, which is a plugin. If that were to happen to you, we can quickly check that out and do clear just to have everything looking better. We'll go to our config file, do city and Vim, and then enter with Vim. And we're going to check for Lazy and Vim. This is the same as opening the file uh, with the mouse on VS Code and when you search for a file. So you'll find this lazy slash mvim.lua. And as you can see here, it has some disabled plugins. And one of them casually is Tutor or Beam Tutor. So we'll delete this line, we'll save it, and then we'll restart it, and then we'll do Tutor. And as you can see, that was extremely quick. That is why you should switch to Vim because it is very quick. So yeah, this is Vim Tutor. If you install just Vim and not NeoVim, you'll most likely want to do Vim Tutor. But if not, as I've said, you can do just Tutor with either capital T. If that doesn't work, try Tutor. But it is always uh, just capital T Tutor. And if you start to slowly read it, you can see that for now, make sure that your that your caps lock is off and press J enough times to move the cursor so that lesson zero completely fills the screen. So we'll do that, it's doing fully J and lesson zero is now in full display. So please, even before downloading the Vim extension and playing around with it, I will highly suggest you to at least download the regular Vim and do that quick command, which is been tutor or tutor and do this tutorial. Once you are able to fully do it and to fully do the things that it says, like I don't think of a bigger leverage of learning when it comes to Vim other than the actual Vim tutor or tutor itself. So this is a must if you're new to Vim. So yeah, please do it. What's next? After doing what I wish I had known before switching, I will start configuring and delving deep into, not really that deep, it's just understanding it. Things like Lua, understanding how it works and how to configure Vim or MVim. Alternatively, if you want to take the same route as me, you can install NeoVim and MVChat right away, or well, clone it more specifically. That was definitely extremely challenging for the first two to three days. Like I felt like an absolute vegetable, like I couldn't move. But once I had everything set up and working and felt comfortable navigating in Vim, 
which was around the six day mark, which if you really put it into perspective, it is a very short amount of time. I then started doing all my work and all my projects in Vim. What often keeps people from learning Vim are the shortcuts and the Vim motions that seem obscure, like the double D to delete an entire line, the U, uh, what else, the P, the V for visual mode, things like that. They all seem quite challenging and they are. But once you learn it, once you delete an entire line five times, you already know it. These shortcuts literally will stick to your head very quickly if you actively search to learn more. And something else, why it seems challenging to people is since we have always been accustomed to using both the keyboard and mouse, Vim, on the other hand, takes a full keyboard centric approach, which can make us hesitant to learn it. So take it step by step, shortcut by shortcut. You don't need to do this crazy like wrap what's within a class and copy directly onto another class. Like you don't need to do all of those things they want. You just have to, as I've said, take it step by step, shortcut by shortcut, and you will become extremely proficient in Vim in no time. So yeah, that is what I wanted to share with Vim, more specifically Neo Vim. I will definitely make a video about my config in the future so you guys can have it there and see if you guys like it. But at the moment, if you are curious about what do I use, I use MB Chat, so you can quickly look that up and find out what it is. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll hope you have an incredible time learning Vim and Vim motions. It is an absolutely incredible tool for programmers and anybody that wants to do quick text editing. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.